there's been a uh, domestic debate about uh, a far sale of state, state assets. The idea is that you generate enough FX to provide the trigger that we're talking about. Now, this debate was, is not initiated by the uh, federal government, as the finance minister was at pains to point out to us yesterday. In fact, it's somewhat embarrassing to them. They're obviously looking at isolated asset sales, but they don't appear to have bought into the big program, and I can see why. One reason would be that you're selling from a position of weakness. Uh, number two, there's the issue of uh, who you're selling to, of course. And uh, there, there's, the th there's the third point would be that you know, only six, six years ago, the Chinese oil company was reportedly offering $50 billion uh, just for the NNPC stake in the unincorporated joint ventures. Now, the total being proposed in the current asset sale is, is all people's opinions, 15 billion. So would that do the trick? Our suspicion is it won't do the trick. And then we don't think it'll be approved. The program will be approved by the federal government. So to, in order to do the trick, as we call it, uh, we think you have to clear the backlog and you probably have to provide, being very conservative, let's say six months of input cover. So four, four, uh, four, million, four billion, excuse me, per month times six plus the backlog. We probably think you need twice 15 to uh, pull the trigger. We haven't completed I, uh, the IMF issue. Now, um, Mrs. Lagarde, who, as we all know, is the managing director of the IMF, said, suggested at the uh, autumn meetings that there would be uh, zero interest money available for appear to be low income or developing country borrowers. Now, Nigeria, as you know, has never drawn from the IMF. And if you look at its quota, which is 2.5 billion SDRs, uh, roughly $3.5 billion. Um, over, period, over time, it, it, it would have access to four times that, so that would take us to roughly $20 billion. But the fact is, um, the federal government's not going to take it. So we better, that's another no. And uh, fi well, then we have what you might call the Uber free market solution. The Uber free market solution is uh, what the traders call uh, letting it go. So basically what you do, you, you meet all demand, you let your reserves dwindle, and you hope and the autonomous funds will come streaming back into the Nigerian market. Uh, this is what we call the Uber free market solution. It's not one which we personally would recommend. It's fraught with risk and, um, you know, on the surface looks very nice. So what we do have in its place is what we call the piecemeal solution, which means people have to be much more patient before we reach this fully functioning FX market. And the piecemeal solution is, uh, would be a combination of several elements. So, for example, uh, the Eurobond sale, I hope rather larger uh, than mooted, which again the finance minister indicated was a possibility were the price to be right. So that would be one part. You could have one-off asset sales. Um, then there's been the talk of the advance, advance uh, oil purchase from the Indian authorities, which the Minister of State for Petroleum has mentioned. Uh, then you might get some recoveries back, you have a better fiscal record, and you might even get some, and, and you would get to pick up an infrastructure financing. Uh, on the point of infrastructure, we'd just like to say that um, there's certainly room for greater use of uh, guarantees on, on the behalf of the federal government. Uh, if you look at the, the DMO's data, you find the contingent liabilities, or the guaranteed part, the, gar the part which is uh, loans, FX loans, guaranteed by the federal government at the end of last year, 260 something billion naira. So there, that then exchange rate, of course, uh, not much more than $1 billion. So there's some room there, certainly. So this is what we're calling the, the piecemeal solution. Uh, this brings, brings a quick look to the fiscal side and uh, what's happening there. Well, the, the, well, the point here, we all, we all know that Nigeria is suffering because of its Achilles heel. It didn't prepare for the slide in the oil price. Uh, it didn't create a large enough buffer, and it did not allow the um, ECA to become a sovereign wealth fund. So the result is, uh, as in Russia, Azerbaijan, and many other places, when the oil price sank, and this time we've been at a low level for two years plus. Last time, 2008, 2009, we just had nine months. So um, the pain was fairly inevitable. Um, what, one thing the chart does show, of course, is in the most recent quarter shown, the non-oil inflows in blue are actually larger than well, last quarter but one. No, last quarter were larger than the oil in gray. So uh, th this, is, uh, this is just a breakdown of where the non-oil revenue is coming from. 
and uh, there's what, they, okay, what a, um, a teacher will call a room for improvement, definitely, in all categories. Um, the, the finance minister says that there's been 700,000 more registrations of companies in the last one year, and along with many other measures taken on the revenue and expenditure side. So there's certainly room for improvement on VAT. There's the old question, that question of do they increase the VAT rate? The IMF says yes, but the IMF's advice isn't very popular, so probably they won't do that. The idea is to increase, of course, the net of people who pay VAT. But uh, scope for improvement here, certainly. Now, this chart, um, it's uh, not very artistic, but uh, basically all the blue lines are up and all the gray lines are down. Blue lines, of course, are the expenditure. Gray lines are the FGN deficit. So we, 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 have, basically, we have basically a structural, a structural deficit with the FGN. Uh, we're showing very quickly, uh, this is the FAC, uh, the monthly FAC payouts. Now, you'd expect these in the ideal world to be, be, these to be slightly more positive and reflect the fact that nominal collection has picked up. But actually, the, the key point to remember here is that is the time lag. So the, the, um, the calculation of oil revenues is three, uh, oil revenues takes place, is based on three months earlier. So for example, the September figure for the, for the fact payout from the mineral or oil section was actually based on the June revenues. June revenues, you know, the June, of course, was a low point, a low point for um, due of the sabotage side. On the domestic debt side, uh, this is something that we have to flag up because, uh, well, not the stock of a domestic debt, which of course we know is uh, very modest and it's always quoted as exemplary, and the reason why Nigeria compares so favorably with its peers, according to the ratings agencies and others too, including ourselves. But of course, the critical point, of course, is the debt service. And the debt service has racked up very rapidly. So now in this year's budget, which probably won't be uh, achieved. This year's budget, they have 34% of the revenues that will, are going to be allocated to debt service, which most people say is, not, if not alarming, approaching, approaching alarming. This, of course, is why the uh, federal government's very keen, or the finance ministry especially, is very keen to borrow externally and ideally on a concessional basis and is having some, uh, some success on, on, those, on that basis. This undoubtedly is the way going forward, which is why the presidency submitted uh, a few days ago a request to the assembly to approve external borrowing $30 billion over the next three years, all of which other than the Eurobond program, four and a half billion US would be concessional. Well, of course, so all these debts being issued, who's going to buy it? Well, uh, again, the, the gray doesn't show up very well, but, they, but the, the, the point basically is that issuance is increasing, but um, but the total bid has remained healthy, if, if on slightly downward trend. And uh, how come it remains healthy? The reason is, so, so, so we have here, this is the, this is the pension funds, the PFAs, the, um, the division of the assets under management. So for the largest section, of course, is FDN bonds, 53.8%. This is August uh, 15. If we go on, we'll find that August 16, which is the, la the latest figure from PENCOM, 57, 57.1%. So um, as long as the PFAs are buying government paper, uh, the government can feel, well, not relaxed, but a little more comfortable, let's say. Why they're buying government paper? Um, a number of reasons. One, of course, matching purposes. Another reason is that they, they got a bit burnt, let's say, in the equities blowout 2008, 2009. And a third reason could be they find it, it's much easier to explain to the investor, particularly the retail investor, that um, you know, movements, movements on fixed income rather than movements on equities, one, being rather, one, one having been rather more volatile than the other. So we're just about to close off here on our section. So finally, we have to end up inflation. So, well, we show this for two reasons. So basically, you had a surge in inflation, and this is, divided, uh, this is driven by the FX issue. Uh, now, what's happened now, the month on, although we're still increasing year on year, although not very much, month on month, the headline figure is slowing pretty quickly. And the reason is, whereas not long ago, the driver was the FX, the driver now is the squeezed demand. 
So what we have, so we have a peak, we have I think 18% in our forecast for the end of this year, but thereafter falling pretty rapidly due to positive base rate, positive base, uh, base effects. Uh, relating to this, just very quickly, one organization we haven't mentioned, of course, is the MPC, so we're going to mention it now. Uh, the MPC, the MPC, well, we mentioned once in the context of it hiking 200 basis points and not getting the result it wanted in June. We mentioned it a second time because um, b b basically it, our, our reading of the latest communique is that uh, you know, they've given up the, the pursuit of the offshore investor, the latest pursuit of the offshore investor, let's say, and the movements in the policy rate from here on next year are going to be downwards, tracking or maybe anticipating inflation. Uh, so we close off with our forecasts here. I don't know if everybody can see them. I'll just highlight three, uh, one of which we've mentioned before, which is the growth. We've got a contraction of 1% this year, growth next year 2%. Um, as we said, this isn't very exciting. Based, if you think population is growing 2.3% according to consensus figures, so per head, still shrinking. Uh, what are the drivers here? Well, the, well, the main driver here is, is um, FDN policy. By, by FDN policy, uh, what I'm talking about is the expansionary budget and the fact that um, this year's budget, of course, we all know is late in passage. Capital releases are going to pick somewhat. So the minister was saying yesterday that um, capital releases under this year's budget, year to date, 725 billion naira, uh, and uh, uh, some more was released yesterday, as, uh, as she told us. Uh, second one, we have, we have our oil price assumption. As we said, we're not very excited about the oil price environment. We, so, so we got 60 at the end of next year. Uh, finally, the exchange rate. So we have, uh, we got 360 for the end of next year. People might think, why 360, considering where we are now, where the parallel rate is now? But of course, the supply is highly limited and there's actually no autonomous flows. So our assumption is those flows will pick up steam during next year and hence 360.